You're listening to SM Media, the home of exclusive West of Scotland Football League content. Hi folks and welcome to the latest episode of the SM Media West of Scotland football show. I'm Scarlett Pike, it's an absolute pleasure to be your host as always and it's a pleasure to welcome this week's guest. It's an absolute pleasure to have on the, the manager of Renfrew, Jimmy Quigley. Jimmy, it's a pleasure to have you on, thanks for coming on. Thanks for inviting me, pleasure to be on here Scott, cheers. It's a pleasure. Uh, obviously it's been a been a big season obviously for Renfrew, like, there's a, a lot to get into. So it's sitting top of the second division, one of the only teams in the second division to have a game at the weekend, which we'll get into later on, but now sitting six points clear, obviously been a, a really good season, only lost two games, 45 points to 21 games. A lot of people did have these as favourites at the start of the season, but it must be good just to be sitting in that position and have a wee bit of, a, wee bit of a gap between the top and everybody else. Yeah, as um, I set the guys a target at the start of the season that we wanted to get out of this division. So before COVID hit in, we were in the first division. We well, were sitting, I think, fourth or something, and they'd done the average points. So when they'd done the average points thing, we ended up fifth or sixth, and we ended up in the promotion spots. Then COVID hit, reconstruction happened, and we ended up in the conference league. So I think the club itself, in terms of stature and in terms of infrastructure, is probably a first division club. So our aim this season was to try and get out there in one of the top three spaces. So sitting nice just now, but there's nothing, nothing won yet, so... Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, you must be delighted as well. We speak a lot about it on here any any time we talk about it. through the squad, the likes of Kieran Diver and Scott Morton. Scored a lot of goals last season. They're now carrying it on this season. There's a lot of deep players coming in as well. What's it? How do you feel the kind of squad's done this season? Uh, Kieran just took off a bit last year. Scott had a few injuries, but his contribution has been good as well. Uh, Diver will scored goals at any level. Absolutely any level. The boy's got a natural talent for finishing. Um the only thing that will stop him going higher is him himself. Uh, I think he's still got a lot to learn in terms of shape and where to be in position, but for a boy 21, 22 years old to hit 20 goals a season repeatedly and every team he's been in means that he knows where the goal is. So I'm really happy with my front four or five players that are contributing. That's a, a big reason for the success this year is, is the amount of goals we have been scoring, so it's pleasing to watch. Yeah, and you look at last season as well, obviously you finished fifth in one of the conferences and the way it was going to work is if Darvo would went up, you would have went into the first division. That must have been a sickener, but also, what was the kind of reaction to that? Did you view that as like an opportunity just to have a, a year kind of building towards getting up there again? So, actually what happened was the boys all went to Benidorm, and they're sitting in a pub with all the boys for the Bens. Some of the boys for the Ben pub are there, and that had a knock-on effect to have no winning, because it meant Bens came out of the yeah. first division as well. So, it was a kind of spoiled the mood over there, but... I, between the two clubs, I think it made them more determined to try and get out their respective divisions to get where they're back to. So it kind of galvanised them a wee bit because where we were had nothing to do with Arvo result. It's where we were finished because that's where we deserve to be in that season and because we're the inconsistency. So although Darvo no beating Trinent kind of had a knock-on effect, because it was it was never going to be in our thoughts because whatever league we won, we're going to go and try and do as well as possible on it. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously this season has, apart, obviously the league finishes, the league position's been really good, but some silverware in the bag already, uh, beating Wildlands Vicks and penalties to win the, the Strathclyde Demolition Cup. Obviously that's a, a trophy in the cabinet, but also potential entry into the Scottish Cup. Well, massive for the club. Um, the last time we won anything was 2007, I think we won the first division. And before that was the Scottish itself, the extra Scottish Junior Cup in 2001. So, beat two really good teams in the semi final St. Cads, who are a smashing team having a really good season. Um, and Whitlitz as well, who I actually thought were a better side uh, up until we scored, then had a good 20 minutes, and I thought they were a better team up until they got a man sent off. So, it was always pleasing. Cup games are all just about winning, isn't it? So, that was pleased for everybody involved, the committee and players, etc. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, we'll. The games against Abbey Vale and Mancari, which I, I can have, I think, first ones in a couple of weeks, and then there's one in the middle yeah. of April. Yeah, and the end of, I think it's the end of the 29th of April, the first one, and then the 13th of May, I think. Right, it is. Okay. So we played Mancari last year in the cup up through there as well. So we kind of know what they're like. I don't know much about Abbey Vale, but I'll, one of the boys is going to go down and watch them for me, give me a wee bit of pot. But... Brilliant. Brilliant. Obviously, we'll, we'll get into your game on Saturday later on when obviously you, you drew 1 1 with Joker, but we'll start with. The action over the weekend, uh, the weather had a bit of an impact as it's tend to do this season, as it always tends to do. But we did have some games. We'll start with the 
the big game in Ayrshire. Ayrshire stands still for this game, and it was another eventful derby between Cumnock and Auchinleck. Cumnock 2, Auchinleck Talbot 4. Auchinleck took the lead in the first, uh, Samson and Boylan with the first two goals. Uh, Cumnock brought it back to 2-2, and then uh, Aaron Mason scored twice as Auchinleck secured a huge 4-2 away victory. It's been a bit of a bit of a crazy weekend for Auchinleck, but first of all, a massive league result. Massively result. They just do what Auckland do, don't they? They just churn out result after result. So uh, they've set a standard through Junior Fitber for as long as I've played the game. Um, and they see me every season. They're up there competing for some trophies or silverware or some sort of description. So we played come little in the season. I was impressed with them as well with HA uh, and Gintz doing, doing, doing a really good job down there. But losing two goals in the injury time is a bit of a sickener from, from that position, eh? Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, Auckland Lake, the, the first thing that the grips is that they're still in that title run. There's no doubt about it. But they have a lot of games to play from now until the end of the season. They've only played 15 league games and they have 15 left to play. It's going to be pretty hectic to get all them in. What does that... See, when, you, see when you're in that position, when you've got kind of 15 games to play from now until the end of May, it's basically just going to be two games a week. It's going to be relentless. How how did that... Obviously, Tucker's got a really good squad in there and a real experienced squad, but it's going to be difficult for them to, to manage that, particularly when you've got potentially a lot of teams to play in there that are going to potentially challenging for the title as well. Yeah, I think I think Tucker and his squad have always epitomised the old saying a one game at a time. Mm-hmm. Every single game they play, I don't think they look any further forward than one game at a time. And in the tweaks his squad and playing staff at the right time to get the result on that day. Uh, he's been a master at it for years and the team has been a master at it for years. So I'm pretty sure they'll just be crossing games off as and when they come one game at a time and not be looking any further forward than that. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, as well, they're going to have less games to play and they have been, obviously, expelled from the South Challenge Cup after Seen fielding an illegible player. We did know this was coming. We did hear that this was potentially going to happen, but as I, I will be a sore one, particularly when you beat a team like East Kilbride 1-0, obviously a team higher up. To then go out that way, it's, it must be a sore one. It must be for them. Um, and again, it... it to all accounts, they were real well, worthy winners as well. Yeah. Fair on the day, I saw here. So, um, it'll be a sore one to take, but I think they'll just prioritise it again, like one one game at a time, and they'll just tick off every box towards trying to hunt down Beeve and Pollock and Darvill in front of them. Yeah, absolutely. Plus, beating a Pollock, Pollock had a 2 0 home victory over Atherley. Goals from Fraser and Nelson quite late on, actually, but it's a, another big win for Pollock. And as we say, mostly about Pollock right now, and similar to Auchinleck as well, they just need to keep winning. Paul, I've got a really good squad. We played them in a pre-season earlier when Muddy was still there. Obviously, a change of manners came in and maximum of his ideas and stuff, but they've got a really, really big berth of talent in there as well. So they'll be just wanting to kick on as well. Arthur, obviously, changing managers twice in space of three weeks won't really be good for the players. They just seem to be in a wee bit of a rut. Um, but the boys up there will just need to dig deep and wait to see who comes in and, and takes over the reins for that point and try and get as many points on board as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, big, big result for Paul. We'll move on to Largs, who are now sitting fifth on the table with a massive 3-1 victory over Irvin Meadow. A double from David Ramsey and Lewis was in the score sheet. Massive result for Largs. And again, they just keep they're flying under the radar. It's been a massive season. I didn't, did not see them sitting in fifth place at this point in the season. Arnie's done a great job down there. Yeah. It doesn't get as much credit as he's actually doing down there. Uh, if you look at that league, right, it's really, really tight. There's only five teams with a positive goal difference. Everybody yeah. else has got a negative goal difference. And the five teams that have got it are the big hitters, B, Davo, Paul, Talbot, the Bankies, etc. Everybody else is minus or just mm. run about level for that. So for them to be fifth place where they are just now racking up results, is, it's unbelievable for them. It really, really is. So you, they're flying under the radar, as you say, but you just be able to tick off boxes, tick off points and just try and get as high up that table as possible, as quickly as possible. Yeah, certainly will as well. Arvin Meadow, they've been in a, a difficult kind of run, actually, as well. When you look at it, they won the, they won the three games in the Vida. They've had a bit of a kind of difficult season as well. They're still sitting in six. They've also changed manager twice this season. They are they're potentially just needing a bit of stability, I would say, just to get back in there. Because they're getting wins, but just to get that stability will be massive for them. Uh, definitely and a couple of wins either way or losses you're right up and down that table it's not as if you're only dropping one position so you're flying up and down that table three four positions so it'll be a sore one on Saturday but they've still got games in hand over Lars I think they've got a couple of games in hand over Lars as well so yeah. it's an opportunity for them to call that back as well but they're again sitting with a negative goal difference but sitting challenging up around about the top of the table which is pleasing to see for, for any manager coming into that club Yeah absolutely final game in the Premier Division was Peters Hill now Troon 2 
Ben Black and Dean Fulton with the goals for Troon. They've now won four games in the bounce. They're now sitting in eighth place. And Troon are on our team as well. They just they were kind of struggling a wee bit. Four wins in a row and they've climbed a lot of places in the league. Yeah, the last four wins are the informed team in the league, DNF, eh, for the last four wins. But yeah. I find out Troon result every Saturday because if it's a clean sheet, big deal is on the, on the Facebook straight away, clean sheet Saturday. So <laughs> every, time I, every time I log in, that's his, that's his saying. Him and Dino have got a love in on Facebook and it's quite sickening to watch, to be fair. But um, good boys doing Troon. And then again, it's, if you look at the competition around about that area with Cumnocks and Hurlfords and Rob Roy and Glen Afton, it's really, really tight in that middle bit of the table as well. So picking up every point is invaluable. So that's a good win for them on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, we've got some games in the, the midweek we'll touch on maybe later on. But first division, five games took place. We'll start with the, the league leaders, Coburnie. 4 now home win over Rutherglen. Coburnie have been kind of in a bit of a difficult run. Obviously, they've only won one in the last four in the league. But just to get that 4 now victory, Owen McGinn to be a double, that'll be a good win for them. And it obviously gives them a bit of breathing space at the top of the league. Yeah, yeah, Sean's come in and try to put a wee bit of stability in the club yeah. from being away and then coming back in. Um, really good club. I used to play with Coburnley really well. Good set up as well. So I see they're in a wee bit of financial dire straits, it might suggest from that. So hopefully they come out that the other side. So Sean just can go to concentrate what he can concentrate on, which is picking up points on the part. So hopefully that kicks him on. Being at the top of that league, you just want people chasing you, don't you? So you might get as many points on the board and then leave it to others. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, next game was obviously Ben Bob 3, Cumbernauld 1. Cumbernauld were 1 now up at half time. And Ben Bob brought it back. Bow, McDonald, and McCrone with the goals. And Ben Bob now sat second in the league. And Ben Bob have just again four wins in a row. I remember at a point in this, we were looking at Ben Bob. I think it was just after New Year, and I think they were sitting in 14th. They're now second. Yeah. And it shows you two things shows you A, the brilliant run Ben Bob have been on recently, and how open this league is. Uh, that's the tightest league out of them all to be yeah. fair that first division it's it's really 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 tight and unforgiving as well I speak to Marty quite a lot who's assistant down at Benz um, and you're right he was just hovering above relegation but he didn't think they were that bad I said that they should be there so it was a kind of false position four wins in the bounce informed team in that league as well and takes them right up to second so again points on the board and let other people chase them yeah absolutely uh, next result Thornwood 1-2-1 one, one home to Bonnet and Thistle Thornwood obviously have got a new manager, former uh, Ross Vale and co-winning boss David Gormley is now in there. Before we get into the game, I did say, I did think Dave, David would be back in management shortly. I think that's a great appointment for Thornwood. It definitely is. I know uh, Dolzo and Nizzy went to Cumbernauld. Um, they've done a fantastic job if you look at where Thornwood is before they've left. So maybe it's just when they get the best out of the players and that's maybe the right time to move on. And, and Gorms is always going to leave one job and probably really quickly going to another one. So that bounce back ability of getting a new gaffer on the day seems to have worked for them. Yeah, absolutely. And they get their first one in four games as well. And again, we, with Thornywood and Bonnet, and they're obviously sitting in a similar place. They're in a, a position now where they probably won't get promotion. Well, they probably, will, probably it's very unlikely they'll get promotion, but they're just in a position now. They just want a, a stable season. They want to get out of that, just stay away from relegation, and that would result in a successful season for both sides. Definitely agree, especially in that division. I think everybody's priority from all the teams would be to get make sure you're safe first and foremost before you look at anything else. Because it's been Bob have shown you can go from 14 to second in the space of two or three months, so everybody should be looking at stability first and then looking up the way. So that'd be a really positive season for Bonneton and Thornwood if they can stay in that division. Yep, and while it's at off bottom of the table as well, they won 3 1 at home to Rossville, goals from Baird, Henderson, and Berry. Obviously, Whitlitz, obviously, we spoke about them earlier on. You you beat them in the final to uh, to win the, the Strathclyde Cup. They are a really good side and they've lost a good few players. They are, they, they, I think, I've said for a while, I think they've been in a false position. Definitely. Totally agree with that. Uh, we played them pre-season game friendly down there and you could tell the quality in the squad. And as I said, I thought they were a better side for probably a, after 20 minutes in that final until they got a man sent off. They were on the ascendancy and you knew if they just go and kick on in that league. But again, they're leaving themselves a lot to do with the amount of games they've got in hand. So can they cope with the schedule? I'd like to think they could because I think they're good enough and that is a really a false position for, for what looks for me. Yeah, absolutely. They're on our team, uh, 14 games they've left to play between now and the end of the season. So it's going to be a busy few weeks for Whitlitz. And the final game in the first division was Johnson Borough 1, St. Caddox 1. St. Caddox were 1 now up at half time and Cruden scored the equaliser for Johnson. St. Caddox set third and 37 points from 18 games and Johnson set 31 points from 20 games. St. Caddox, obviously, it's, they'll be, it'll probably be, be feel that two points drop when they've obviously saw Coburn go a bit uh, go clear. And Ben Bubble will take them in second, but probably a right result for both teams. 
Yeah, Jamie's done really well at the Borough as well. Got a good turnover of players coming in. And the, I think his aspirations would be to stay in that league. And then as soon as you get in that league and you start climbing it, then you start to give yourself that wee bit of hope. Could you actually get out it first time? So Johnston Borough staying in that league and finishing high up with a great achievement for Jamie this year. And St. Cads, if you look at that top five teams, it's hard to pick three for five to go up there. I think they'll yeah. change from Gatkin to Coburnley. I think they'll change places repeatedly over the next three or four weeks. It's just all so tight. Yeah, so so tight. And it obviously makes a gripping uh, viewing for the, the West of Scotland fans. Second division, we only had two games, obviously. You were part of one of them. Yoker won, Renfrew won. Dory McCallum put Yoker up just before half time. And then obviously Kieran Diver again. Gets you a much needed draw. If if you do go on go on to win the league, you will look back at that game as a massive result. I think so. Um, if it had been without exaggeration, it's the best we've played all season. See if we'd have been three or four up after twenty minutes with the chances we missed. I don't think anybody could have complained. And then the first shot at goal when the boy scores one for 25, 30 yards into the top corner was a great finish. Um, we were then equalised in the ascendancy the whole second half and missed multiple chances again which Keane will be disappointed with but it just pops up and scores every week problem we've got is that we've drawn the most amount of games in that division apart from yeah. Greenock so we've dropped points at teams that probably you'd think on paper you'd pick points up from so where it's good to make sure you're not losing any points the draws is kind of hindering the wee touch just now because that could have been a bigger cushion uh, going into the final bit of the season yeah absolutely it's obviously a, a big point as well where did you make a yoker? I thought they've done well. They set their team out well. They've got all young boys. Another turnover of the staff from John's turned a few boys over again as well. So um, just keep bringing it good boys. The surface was good. We were just really, really good on the day, to be honest. Uh, I think we were very confident and moved the ball a bit well. But they never really troubled us going forward. Um, and I think they were quite happy to sit with the point because they're sitting mid-table as well. So I think if they want to go on a wee run between the end of the season, they're maybe looking at five points half the promotion points mm-hmm. that maybe they could pip something. So... That's probably a better point for Yoker than it was for us, I would say. Yeah. And we'll move into the other game. Mabel to fourth Wanderers now. Mabel now sitting 37 points from 17 games. They're levelling points with Ashfield. Ashfield, obviously, the better goal difference. And it just, a game with Mabel, obviously, Carlo always has a has a well-organised side, but they've got players like uh, Robert Parts and Mick McCann who can always score goals. And I think they'll be, a, I, th- I think, obviously, usual, I think usual win the league and I think Mabel will be second. That's what I've thought for a while. I think we've got Mabel twice and Craig Mark twice and we played Craig Mark last year um, and they were a good team good to watch good set up knocked the ball a bit well um, and we've not played Mabel yet so that could be four really really big games for us the way we have is try to look at it is it a two point average gets you in the promotion hunt from the start of the season so if you look at most of the leagues anybody that's got a two point per game average will be there and thereabouts and Mabel and ourselves are, are sitting in that position where we've got more than two points per game moving in so um, I'd I'd imagine between Ashfield, Mabel and Craig Mark will be a, um, ourselves, it'll be quite tight to the top, pushing it in that last wee bit. Yeah, obviously, uh, another team I want to get your thoughts on, obviously, as well, Glasgow Pearson. You just play them in a couple of weeks. They've been probably one of the stories of the season in that league. Ah, fantastic. Uh, absolutely great. So, their place is a hard place to go. So, um, we went there, beat us 3-2. That was the first league loss we'd had for over about a year. Mm-hmm. Um, we could have played still to this day and no scored. We had a horrendous time in front of goals. But you know what you're getting under when Big Kirky came and played up front. I played well with Joker. He was, he was great, led the line well for us and stuff like that. And a lot of places will turn up at that ground and not fancy it. A lot of teams will look at it and go, but what a, what a success story that's been to go for where they are to where they are in this league just now. Yeah, absolutely. Who's kind of some of the other teams in that league that have kind of caught your eye? You're like, there's a there's a lot of good sides in there. And it's, again, not another really <coughs> tight league and it shows how good the conference systems work. I'll, I'll tell you who was great, Greenock. I watched Greenock, played Greenock twice and I thought they were excellent. Uh, Boy, Nick has done really, really well. He's got a system of playing with the, the boys that got there. They're all young. They're all enthusiastic. They get on the ball and knock it well. They've got a good shape about them. So I think it's a kind of false position for them because they should maybe picked up more points than they have. Mary Hull beat us after we won the Scottish 4-0, rightly so. Uh, they saw the Demolish Cup 4-0, but uh, they worked really, really hard as well. Everybody's, when you turn up against these teams, You've got a target in your back because you're sitting top of the league. So some of the effort and commitment I've seen through some of these teams and some of the football some of them played is really, really good. So the conference has worked, in my opinion. Yeah, it certainly has. Uh, third division, let's get into that. The big game was obviously between the top two and there was a clear winner. And now Adrosin now set a point clear at the top of the table. A 4-0 home win over Lanark. A double for Aidan Ferris. Goals from McGuinness and Craig as well. Again, when one play two, if whoever wins is obviously wants to go in and kick on to win the league and Adrosin have made a massive statement Saturday. 
Definitely, I know Simon will probably be disappointed at Larnock, but again, they've got a game in hand over a Drossen, so it was a probably a must win for a Drossen. Mm-hmm. Can't believe me, Liam McGuinness is still scoring when he's nearly 50, to be fair <laughs> as well. But if you look at that two point average that I was talking about, these these teams are sitting around about that as well. So they're, they're going to be there or thereabouts when they're pushing for that promotion place as well. So uh, that's a really, really tight league as well. If you look at Fela Clyde and Les Mahego and Urban Vicks. False narrative in terms of games and games in hand. If they go on a wee run, then it could put the cat amongst the pigeons. So it'll be quite nervous finish for that that league, I'd imagine. Yeah, both sides were in a really good unbeaten run for a while as well. I think it'll be very close between those two, but I think that's a massive statement win from a Drossen. Uh, next result, Les Mahego beat Luger 3 0. Uh, goal from Nicholson Park and Maguire. Les Mahego now up to fourth in the table. And again, they'll just be looking at that promotion place and thinking we can take that. Definitely. So Big Neil will be looking for that. I went and watched them against Whitlitz in the, one of the cup games as well. And they're a well organised side and get some good player players in there. He needs to stop playing himself, but I would suggest so. He can, he's watching us. That's a wee message for me to him. <laughs> but uh, as I said, I think, that, again, they'll be trying to push on. Vela Clyde are breathing down their neck and so are Lanark as well. So the three below the promotion places are going to kick on. I see anyone for the six will get the three places. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of those teams could be Kello. Kello are now up to seventh in the league. They are on 20, uh, 37 points in 21 games. Again, they'll just be looking to go on a run. They've got the games to do it. 3 0 away, one over the Rye. Richmond, Lang, and Arma. I speak a lot about that, about Kello. They've been in a difficult position for a few years, but Greg's going, Greg Gallagher's went in and he's done a really good job to get them in that position. Yeah. Absolutely has, and you just need to kick on just now. Again, it's about looking after yourself, making sure you get as many points on the bag and hoping teams run about you then start to falter. Mm-hmm. And then you try and capitalise on that. But that's a great position for Kelo to be in. Yep, absolutely. That is that. And the final result in the third division, Kalut Rovers 2, Larkhall Thistle 4. Kalut were up twice, but Larkhall managed to get a 4-2 victory. Goals, uh, a double from Ewan Scott, plus goals from Smith and Hill. And Larkhall, they're obviously sitting above Kelo, and they'll just be in exactly the same position. Yeah, everybody's the same. I think there's only 47, 46 and 45 for Les Mahego, Vela Clyde and Larko. And there's a couple of games yeah. in hand between people. So it's really, really, really tight. So uh, they, that four we have in Vikinic is there on 48. So 1-1 one, one and a couple of defeats for other people jumps you four places. So really, really interesting to watch that run and finish. Yeah, it's going to be very in, uh, intriguing from the end of the season. Colsaith Athletic suffered their first defeat of the season in the fourth division. They were up against title challengers West Park United and it was a dominant 4-0 win for West Park United. Goals from Graham, Daly, Irvin and Ferns. And West Park are now only five points behind Colsaith Athletic with three games in hand and it's opened that title race wide open. Definitely. We played West Park in the league, uh, a cup game this season, sorry, and I thought they were really, really good. Really good people. Steph Graham scores a lot of goals for the middle of the park for them. Uh, they've added well a bit of experience with Eddie Ferns going in there as well. Colsaith ran away with that, get promoted, first team to get promoted and I thought they maybe bit between their teeth to just go and see that league out but they kind of faltered a wee touch which let West, West Park back into it uh, and I would probably say now looking at it it's probably West Park still losing it but yeah, that cool. way three games in hand Yeah, Colsaith cool. only have one game left to play in the season and West Park United have four on there's five points of difference so West Park do it as in West Park's hands and again it just shows you West Park you look at the, the run 18 games West Park have played 17 wins one defeat Colsaith have played eight, uh, 21 games, won 18, drew two, lost one. They're, they're the two massive teams going forward. Unbelievable statistics. And that's well above the two-point average if you look at that as well. Do you know what I mean? So that's that's a fantastic achievement for two of them. And you've got St. Peter's and Thieves sitting in the back room, a similar kind of position, battling for that third place. Yeah, absolutely. There's been a change of manager at Easter House. Mark Mackay obviously lost his job. Again, Mark's been on the show, really like Mark, and just want to wish him the best going forward. Okay. Aye, you're the best, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, diff- obviously, difficult kind of situation for them. Uh, Thorn Athletic three, Rossville Academy four. Kevin Docker to score the hat trick for Rossville Academy and the four three a uh, massive four three one away to Thorn. Again, maybe Thorn and Rossville are put two very close kind of examples here, but probably promotions out of their reach. They can't get relegated, and they'll be just be looking to use the rest of these games to build for next season. Definitely, maybe bed in some new players or some some of the young people through their academy. Uh, and just try and get a high finish position in the league and don't let it peter out. So uh, I think it's going to be, it's definitely going to be between St. Peter's and three for that third place, in my opinion. Yeah, it looks like it. Final result, Eglinton four, Campbelltown pupils now. Eglinton will be in the same boat. They'll just be wanting to, to get their young players and a lot of young players playing at Eglinton as well. First year in the league, they'll just be wanting to do the same. 
Yeah, I'd imagine so. It's good to see young players getting an opportunity to play. I don't know much about Campbelltown, if I'm being brutally honest. The back it's quite far away, so I'd imagine there'd be maybe a struggle for squads. It has a long, it's a good journey back if you win, but it's a long, long journey if you don't. So. It is that. Uh, West of Scotland Cup, two games to touch on. Uh, St Rocks beat Ashfield in uh, 4-3 in penalties after a 1-1 draw in normal time. St Rocks obviously going to the, the quarter-finals and Hurl for three, Drum Chapel three. I think you'll get your money's worth in Hurl on Saturday. Uh, all six goals in the first half. But I think the first 45 were excellent. I don't think the second 45 was <laughs> But penalty shootout, Drum Chapel booked a place in the quarter-finals. And again, just two sides that will be looking to, to maybe get some silverware. I definitely agree with that as well. Ashfield were down to the bare bones, unfortunately. I'd seen that. They were struggling for bodies. But again, using their youth set up, they promoted young boys into the team and gave them an opportunity they might not have got against the other teams like that. Hurlford and Drum Chapel, two big sides, a little bit of talent. So that was as if it were a cracker that first 45 minutes and yeah. nip out for a pint and then miss the rest of it. Back for penalty. Uh, the quarter finals of the, the West of Scotland Cup will take place on Saturday. Auchinleck will host Gart Cairn. Drum Chapel United will play Cowan and Rangers. Nielsen will play Clyde Bank and Craig Mark will play St Rocks. I've got to put you in the spot. Who wins it? Talbot. I think so. Aye, Talbot. Can he bet against them in Cups? You can't really take it against, can't bet against them. So, um, the Bankies might be in with a shout as well. A wee slice shout there, I think, as well, because I think they've, they've got the squad that could get a bit of silverware at the club as well. But hard to see past Talbot, isn't it? Yeah, I would never write off Auchinleck in Cup competitions. Uh, it's been a, obviously been a busy it's going to be a busy few weeks obviously just as we get the kind of leagues into order the weather's not been particularly my friend as of late we obviously the, the call-offs we're just going to run through some of Renfrew's games coming up and just get your thoughts on them away to Glasgow United on Saturday then a few massive games I would say host Glasgow Perthshire away to Craig Mark then host Craig Mark four big games coming up definitely Glasgow United with uh, 4-3 against them uh, um, lost two goals in the space of three minutes when we won 0 up and cruising scored straight really early doors but they've got some really talented players and I think that's a wee false position in there and probably just lack consistency I would suggest for these teams um, Pershire again um, we were looking to revenge our, our defeat off them so you don't want to get turned over twice by the same team in, in your league and the Craig Mark thing back to back I thought was a bit strange so fixtures are a wee bit unkind in terms of we were due to finish in the 6th of May and now we're finishing the 27th of May and then the league starts again on the 29th of July. So it's a very, very short break. Everybody in all these conferences are going to get. So you could end up with players on holiday, people injured, all these sorts of things. But I think if they'd have thrown more midweek games in, they're probably teams would have preferred that and then got a wee bit of a longer break away from football. But massive four weeks coming up for us. Um, looking to take as many points as possible. From yeah, absolutely. Spot. Obviously, the two big targets are obviously getting... Obviously, winning the league's... Uh, obviously the big prize but obviously just getting promotion would be ideal for you as well and obviously qualifying for the Scottish Cup it would be two massive bit things for the club definitely would be huge so um, again we are just trying to take everything one game at a time as well so promotion was the, the overall aim but when you're sitting at top for so long then it's something you actually want to hold on to and try and see over the line and winning the Demolition Cup uh, try and get a good result against both the teams and hopefully getting the Scottish would make it a perfect end to a really good season for us. Yeah, absolutely. Just a couple of games that are going to take place on Wednesday. I'll just get your thoughts on them. We do have a couple to t- uh, come that will play Troon on Wednesday night. An interesting game if you're, you're in the Ayrshire area. Give us a wee prediction for that. Come and Troon, two sides. I think come are probably needing to win more at the moment. Yeah, uh, come with uh, definitely. But Troon are the informed team for me, so I'll probably sneak uh, one no one to Troon. I'll say. Yeah. And that seems to be the only game that's on. I thought it was more than that. It turns out that's the only game. So, again, it's going to be an interesting weekend next weekend. We've got the Cup. We're going to have some league action as well. And we'll be back next week to review the review the action. Jimmy, it's been an absolute pleasure for you on the show. Best of luck for the season ahead. And thank you very much for coming on. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Scott. Thanks very much. Brilliant. Thank you very much for much tuned in. Please follow us on social media for consistent West of Scotland coverage. And as always, subscribe to our YouTube and podcast channels. Thanks very much, folks. We'll see you soon. Cheers. 